what's going on? This is Jason Berkman from Jason Berkman Photography coming straight at you from Austin, Texas. And today we have a very, very special guest for you. That guest is the 23mm f1.4 by Viltrox. This is a really, really cool lens. Um, if you saw my earlier videos, then you saw that I really, really love the 23mm focal length for crop sensor, so 35 millimeter equivalent. The Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 for Canon was my favorite portrait lens. And I do have the 23 millimeter F2 by Fujifilm. And it's one of my favorite lenses. I mean, gosh, I just love all my lenses, but I love the 23 millimeter focal length. The only thing, the only, only discrepancy I had with this little amazing bad boy was I wanted a little bit more bokeh for portraits, because I am I, I love doing portraits. So I thought about getting the 23 millimeter F1.4 by Fuji. But I actually, if you saw my other, other video, you saw, you would have seen, that I got rid of all my Canon gear and basically replaced it with the 56 millimeter 1.2, the ultimate portrait lens, and this guy, the 23 millimeter F1.4 by Viltrox. Let's talk about the build quality first. So the build quality, this thing is all metal construction. It's really great. Um, everything just is really sturdy. It's not weather resistant like the F2. A little bit more of a larger form factor, but again, metal. It's not too big. It's it's got some heft to it, which I actually I actually appreciate. It's just definitely not as hefty as my Canon gear. So. Hence why I love my Fuji stuff. But also if you saw one of my other videos, you would have seen that I have the 85 millimeter 1.4 by Viltrox and 1.4, it's 1.8, sorry about that. But I love that lens. And I mistakenly said, uh, I didn't really realize that there was a Mark II and they have a metal lens hood. So I was touting the metal lens hoods for the 33, the 23, and the 56 by Viltrox uh, when I didn't realize that the 85 had a Mark II and they did have the metal lens hood. And I love that 85, it's really amazing. And this lens hood is really amazing. I love this little, I don't know, can you see that little, I love that little like emblem thing. It just reminds me of like, it's like a Sony G Master or something. It's like the poor man's G Master. Speaking of poor man's lens, one really, really great aspect of having this lens is that it's not $899 like the Fuji 23mm, 20, I can't say that. I can't say 23mm f1.4. The 23mm f1.4, we're gonna go to our BNH right over here and check this out. Viltrox. 23 million, 329 bucks. <sighs> Fuji, what are you gonna do, man? These third party lenses are pretty amazing. And this is, I think, the second uh, third party, I don't know what other third party lenses there are besides my Carl Zeiss 12 millimeter to it, which is pretty darn expensive, brand new, and it came out right when the Fuji X mount system came out. So it's a older lenses, although I love the to it, I love my 12 millimeter. These third party lenses are about five to $600 cheaper than the Fuji lenses. So we're gonna talk about the, the image quality. Wide open, it can be soft. Is it uh, really bad? No, actually. Um, if you have some really good light, it can be extremely sharp. There has been some chromatic aberrations. The first time I took it out, I didn't have any problem with chromatic aberrations or fringing or anything like that. The second time I went out, I went out with my wife and I got the, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I got blue fringing. I mean, who's ever even heard of blue fringing? I got this bright, bright blue fringing. So that was the second time I went out and I was out with my wife and my dog. I was out with Joey, my dog. And the pictures I took of my wife, there was some blue fringing. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, I didn't have any problem for most of the shoot the third time that I used it, and that was with the fashion shoot. 
and I did get some purple fringing, which I was able to fix in post. Luckily, it didn't happen in too many of the uh, shots, and luckily, it didn't happen in shots that we were really, really happy about. That's, you know, I was kind of a little bit worried that maybe I got uh, a bad copy. I don't know. Was, I actually talked to some people at Precision Camera in Austin, Texas about it, and they said, uh, you know, just try it out a few more times and see what you uh, get. And I did get some purple fringing, but of course, it was only when there was blown out backgrounds, and that is to be expected with, uh, you know, with... I'll take what I can get for 329 bucks. The bokeh is going to be a little busy, which I kind of liked. Okay, let's check this out. Check out this shot. Uh, I'm going to, um, oh wait, did I? Did There's Lightroom. Okay, so if you can see this bokeh is, uh, it's kind of busy. Then again, you know, when you have foliage behind your subject, you're going to get a little bit more busy. And especially when the background is not too far away from her. So the bokeh is not going to be as smooth. Um, but it does look pretty pleasing. I actually like it. It gives some kind of life to the portrait. So I found myself in this last shoot, this uh, the shoot that I just did. I did find myself using this lens more than the 56 millimeter 1.2. We were at a hotel in Austin, an old hotel, and we were in the porch area, a very large porch area. I didn't have too much space between me and Alexis. And there wasn't that much space between Alexis and a lot of the background. So I needed to be able to get closer to her and get more of her. So that's why I used the 23 millimeter mostly for that shoot. The shoot I did previously with Morgan, I'll put some of those shots in there with the bridge in the background. Now those shots, I was able to use the 56 millimeter a lot more. I did use the 23 millimeter for uh, for a lot of those shots, but I found myself going to the 56 millimeter. Mil I found myself going to the 56 millimeter because I had a lot more room to move around, so I could really utilize uh, space more. And so it made it more comfortable to use the 56 millimeter. So if you're in a little bit of tighter spaces and you like wide angle, this thing is, is really awesome. Minimum focus distance, not so good. If you're doing portraits, it's not gonna be that big of a problem. If you're doing close-ups, probably gonna be a little bit of a problem. You're not gonna be using this for macro or any, this is not a macro lens. Might be able to get a little bit closer with the 23. Actually, I was able to get a lot closer to things with the 23 and actually get some decent bokeh out of it. The 23 F2, this guy. That's one thing you don't have on here is that uh, click. The click, it's a clickless, clickless. Okay, we're gonna put this thing, why not put this thing on my X-T3? That's pretty, that's pretty. Ain't she pretty? She's my Fuji film X-T3. I know, I'm the poor man's X-T4. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's got some weight, it's got some heft to it. But if I wanna do portraits, I'm gonna need something with an F1.4. If I'm gonna wanna do street, I'm gonna need something that th that's this small and this easy to use. So I got the best of both worlds, really, with that. <music> 
Let's talk about the autofocus on this thing. The autofocus is really great. It's really responsive, it's quick. Some people think that it might jump too quickly. Those are some adjustments that you can actually make in the X-T3 or X-T4 or whatever Fuji camera that you're using in order to uh, ease some of those transitions, slow them down or whatever. So it can be a pretty jumpy, it's very, very quick and it's silent. So for video shooters, this thing is gonna be really great. If you know the 35 millimeter F1.4, that motor is going kind of sucks if you're doing video this thing is extremely quiet a quiet space if you need a quiet space this will provide for that quiet space final thoughts great lens you could use this thing for street you could use it for basically everything and anything i myself love this thing for portraits it's very versatile there is some a level of distortion in it that looks really cool especially if you're coming um, up towards your subject uh, it can it, it can just render some really really cool effects uh, rend the colors render really well you might get a little bit of chromatic aberrations might get a little purple fringing maybe a little vignetting just a, a little bit but it has a lot of character and for $329 this thing is a steal I think that if you're in the market for a 35 millimeter equivalent a 23 millimeter for the X mount system I would go for this before I go for the Fuji 1.4 I'm gonna probably just stick with this thing don't need to upgrade those are my thoughts thank you guys so much for joining me and have an amazing day don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment questions comments feelings thoughts concerns anything that you would like to in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next video peace